AT&T will be using Frontier's fiber for enterprise sales and 5G. Story out of light reading. All right. Out of Dallas, Texas, the big D. AT&T will work with Frontier Communications to bring fiber optic connectivity to large enterprise customers outside AT&T's current footprint. The two companies have signed a multi-year strategic agreement that will also support deployment of AT&T's 5G mobility network. Demand for edge computing and 5G networking is growing. Fiber pathways became a crucial element for AT&T. Enterprise and large enterprise customers need high-speed, low-latency, and highly secure connectivity in markets where it does not own its own fiber. What I'm gathering from this story out of AT&T and Frontier is that there are certain places that AT&T doesn't want to deploy and install its own fiber, and it may make more financial sense for them to just resell or sell as their own Frontier's fiber. But it looks like they're only doing it for enterprise and for their 5G mobile network. So they can kind of pick and choose where they do their own native fiber and where they don't end up doing their own native fiber, they can go with Frontier. AT&T is building out additional fiber across its wired footprint. They plan to reach 2.5 million incremental customer locations passed by the end of 2021, 30 million locations by the end of 2025. AT&T's business fiber network enables high-speed connections to over 2.5 million U.S. business customer locations as of September 30th, 2021. Nationwide, more than 9 million customers and business customers locations are within 1,000 feet of AT&T Fiber. This year, Frontier announced a new strategy to build Gigabit America, which is an aggressive fiber expansion plan that will pass 10 million locations by the end of 2025, and it is central to their strategy. The company expects to make fiber available to 600,000 new locations this year, resulting in about 4 million fiber locations passed by the end of the year. The agreement will enable AT&T to quickly reach additional locations by utilizing Frontier's complementary fiber network. Together, the two companies will enable high-speed connectivity to large enterprise customers within fibers uh, within Frontier's 25-state footprint. Clearly, both companies are looking to expand their footprint and generate this fiber customer revenue. Okay, so AT&T is going to be using Frontier's fiber network to help reach two things enterprise customers in 25 of their service states and then AT&T is also going to use Frontier's network of fiber to strengthen their nationwide deployment of 5G and LTE networking so basically if AT&T doesn't plan on putting fiber somewhere they're going to use Frontier for that access in addition AT&T is going to tap Frontier's Ethernet network to boost connectivity between cell towers and the core network they'll be supporting their wireless network and improvements towards 5G. This quote from Scott Mayer, the president of the company, with Frontier building out its own fiber network where we are not building, we'll be able to work together to provide large business customers with high-speed, low-latency data connectivity they need to grow and thrive. AT&T is essentially going to be plug-and-play in anywhere that Frontier has their networking and fiber assets. So basically, if AT&T doesn't have it, they'll use theirs. It looks pretty strategic, like the two companies are complementing each other uh, in these areas. And I think both Wireline and the business Wireline specifically, and the wireless, are going to really benefit from this. This is smart. I like this stuff. Uh, this is one of those things that I've wanted to see more of. I think we might actually see some of this with Verizon, too. And, you know, Like, honestly, the, to me, this just appears kind of to be like a tip of the iceberg. I think... Uh, I think AT&T is smart to do this. It allows them to generate revenue from their services in places they don't have their native fiber. They can also deploy for their wireless network. I think we're going to see Verizon do this with Frontier 2. I think they'll build relationships. I think both of those companies would be wise to look beyond even their own current partnerships, look to expand, maybe have two, three, or four different partnerships for fiber access for their tower sites, and they could also resell them. Kind of like what we we see what T-Mobile is doing and I don't know, what do we call on that? Um, small scale with their pilot fiber in Manhattan. These are the types of things that just, it's like, 
you know, it's like putting a cherry on top. You know, it's it's not the meat and the gravy. You know, it's nothing like that. But it adds to their ability to offer the services in more places than they would on their own. It's better to resell somebody else's fiber than to not sell anything in a particular market. So I get what AT&T is doing. I agree with it. I think it's smart. They're wise to do it. Of course, owning and operating, deploying your own fiber is the best way to go. But if it can't be done strategically in what makes sense from a business standpoint, like the return of investment, for example, it doesn't add up, then this is pretty much the second best thing you could do. Kind of kind of just leasing space on the fiber network of a partner and generate your revenue as needed on demand. And it could work. I think it'll be just fine. I think it's smart of AT&T to do this.